Hey guys, uh, here we've got an example of an organic chemistry question which assesses um, slightly different skills which I have gone through in the past. Uh, typically, I like to go through pattern recognition with these type of questions, but this one actually assesses our understanding of uh, reasoning, logical reasoning, as well as a specific skill that is actually mentioned in the ASAP booklet, which is being able to translate information from one form to another. Now, in this case, we want to be able to transform the information from verbal, which is in text or in words, to a visual way, which in this case uh, is in the, the diagram or uh, the structure of or an organic uh, chemistry molecule. So let's just jump straight in. I would go to the question first. So which of the following is the likely product of the reaction of acidified, uh, and I know that's actually potassium permanganate, not that it's important, and it says on this particular molecule over here. And we can see from the answer options that we will have two products. Okay, just looking at A, B, C, or D. So our job is to try to figure out what two products are we going to get. Now it's likely that we will need to follow a whole bunch of rules or reasoning that they will have provided to us. And so let's go up to the text and try to figure out, figure out what we'll need to kind of look at. How are we going to predict, you know, what the product is going to be? Uh, and in this case, the paragraph above is not that long, which is good. So we may as well try to read the whole thing. So we'll go up and, but we have the goal in mind now. We want to look for how this, um, how this reactant is going to produce two different products or what kind of products are we going to produce. So potassium permanganate in acidic solution can cause cleavage of carbon to carbon double bonds. Okay, so what this is telling us is that the reaction is going to start off essentially with breaking a double bond. Now, if I go back to the molecule that I've been provided, I can see that the double bond they're probably referring to is this. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So they're saying that we're going to cleave. In other words, we're going to chop or break that double bond. Let's keep on going. So at least now I'm, uh, you know, when I'm reading, I know what they're kind of referring to. Okay. At a double bonded carbon, which has only carbon attachments, a ketone is formed. Okay. Now let's just stop for a moment and consider what they're saying here. At a double bonded carbon, so well, what do they mean by a double bonded carbon? If I go to my diagram, that's probably referring to this carbon and that carbon. Those are the carbons which are double bonded. Okay, so let's have a look at those carbons. At a double bonded carbon which has only carbon attachments, a ketone is formed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to just hone in on the area that's kind of important. Now, I know that what's probably important is this area of the molecule here. Okay, so let's hone in on that. I'm going to draw it out because it looks like it's important for us to know what's actually attached to these particular carbons. Okay, this is where if you're not familiar with drawing molecules, um, you will probably need to do a little bit of practice. So now I'm going to draw the carbons which are double bonded to each other. And on the right hand side, where I have the CH2, I know that that's, that's going to be just two hydrogens attached. Now I also know that uh, to meet the octet rule, or in other words, knowing that carbon needs to have four bonds attached to it generally, that there should be two other bonds attached there. So now we can see that on the other side we have a CH. Now what this is telling me is that there is one hydrogen attached to that carbon. And the other carbon that it must be attached to, uh, so the other thing it must be attached to, I should say, is the next carbon. So the one that I've just drawn over here is actually this carbon in the backbone. Okay, now I'm not going to draw the whole molecule, but just for the purposes of demonstrating to you how it looks like, uh, I'm going to put some numbers as well, just so that it's clear. Okay, so let's say that this is uh, number, that's the first carbon, that's the second carbon, and that's the third carbon. 
we're kind of like following the backbone of the molecule here backwards. This is actually number one, this is number two, and this one is number three. Now, if we look at the third carbon, it's also attached to one hydrogen. So we've got the CH. Okay, so I'm going to, in this case, just write that down here. I'm going to put it down at the bottom there. And at the top, it's attached to a methyl group. Okay, and then presumably that's also attached to a, another carbon, which is going to be the, the next one in line, which we could label number four. But I'm not going to draw the whole molecule because from what I've read so far, the important part of the molecule is where the double bond is. So stuff's happening around the double bond. I'm not too interested in the rest of the molecule. Okay, so I'm going to uh, kind of yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So I know that there's more that I could draw, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to zoom back out and have a look at the question again. Okay, we'll go back to the question. Alrighty, and also back to the sentence. Add a double bonded carbon, which has only carbon attachments. So if I look at carbon two, that's one of the double bonded carbons. Is that only attached to um, carbons? You know, does it only have carbon attachments? Well, it's, it's connected to one carbon, which is the number three, which I've labeled. Okay. So it's directly connected to this guy, but it's also got a hydrogen. So it's not only attached to carbons. So a ketone probably won't be formed in that, um, on that carbon. If that kind of makes sense, I'm going to put the line where we're going to cleave it as well. On the other carbon, number one, it's attached to two hydrogens. Okay. Now, one thing that you might say, you might say, Barry, but if you look at carbon number two and you look at carbon number one, they're attached to three different things, okay? So, for example, carbon one is attached to two hydrogens, and it's also attached to carbon number two via the double bond, okay? So, it's attached to three things. Okay, fair enough. We'll keep on going, okay? We'll keep reading. So, at a double bonded carbon which has only one other carbon attached, a carboxylic acid is formed. Now, this is where it can be a little bit confusing. Um, if I looked at carbon one, we could say that it's attached to two hydrogens and one carbon. Okay, we could say that, which is carbon number two. So we could say, okay, yeah, maybe that's what it's referring to. Um, and if we looked at the one on the left, we could say that carbon two is actually attached to both carbon one as well as carbon three. So we could say it's attached to two carbons. Okay. Um, so according to this, if it's attached to one other carbon, then a carboxylic acid is formed. All right, so we'll, well, let's leave this for a moment and we'll keep on going because I want to understand the rules properly, okay? If you keep on going, where both other attachments are hydrogen, CO2 is formed. Now, this is really important, okay? Uh, there's something that people might miss here. There's there's uh, something implied in this sentence, especially when it says both other attachments. So obviously, what they're trying to say is, when we are looking at the carbon, uh, the double bonded carbon, we're only interested in the attachments, and it says that there are only two by the fact that it mentioned both, both other attachments. So I think what it's implying is we're not interested in the fact that it's already double bonded to another carbon. We're not interested in that. Okay, so uh, that last sentence is probably applicable to our carbon number one, the one that I've just numbered as carbon number one, because if you look at it over here, it's attached to two hydrogens. Okay, so what this is saying is a, a CO2 is probably going to be formed. Okay, so there is a double bonded carbon, carbon number one, which attached to uh, two hydrogens, therefore CO2 is formed. That is enough for us to, that's enough for us to say that a CO2 molecule will be formed. So if you look at answer options A and B, they're probably correct. We can actually get rid of C and D because there's no, there's no CO2 produced by those reactions. Okay. Now let's have a look at carbon number two. Now that we have confirmed what they mean by, um, you know, how many carbon attachments they might have. So if we look at number two, it's attached to number three and another hydrogen. So it's only attached to one carbon, which means that we would go to the previous sentence at a double bonded carbon, which has only one other carbon attachment, 
a carboxylic acid is produced. We need to be able to recognize that a carboxylic acid is that group. Okay, it's a COOH or a C carbon double bonded to an oxygen as well as bonded to a hydroxy group. So option A is the answer. Okay, so I hope you can see what's going on here. We need to follow the rules very carefully and we're really being assessed on our verbal reasoning skills as well as our ability to translate the text into a visual, uh, into visual information or, you know, translate into uh, a visual um, answer, I suppose. Okay, hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.